what were the key factors behind this partnership that made you think this was the right move for Starbucks in China? This all stemmed from uh, a day that Daniel and I spent together about a year ago in Hangzhou, where he outlined for me kind of their vision, where they were going. I outlined for him what we felt were the two transformative elements in, uh, in modern day retail. And there was a shared vision. So the shared vision has led to this partnership, which I believe is a transformative partnership uh, that will take the two companies forward in a way that no one else in the world is doing. How would you describe the competitive landscape in China with the likes of Luckin Coffee coming up and expanding quite quickly? Are companies like them considered a serious threat now to Starbucks? Well, look, we've, you know, Starbucks has been in business for 47 years, and we've always had competitors. In, you know, we operate in 77 countries around the world, and there's many, many competitors in each one of those countries. I think here in China, the opportunity is significant, and I think uh, many, many businesses see the opportunity to, uh, uh, to grow a business around coffee in China. And so that's bringing new entrants uh, into the market. And you know, we, we expect that, and we recognize that. For us, it means we stay true to what we do well. Premium coffee, a premium experience, the third place, and extend it to digital. Would you ever rule out acquiring one of those new entrants? You know, we never rule that out, but you know, the fact is we've got a great organic growth strategy. You know, we're building 600 new stores a year, and we're now north of 3,400 stores here in China. So over the next uh, few years, we'll, we'll, we'll quickly reach uh, 6,000 uh, stores here in China. And uh, the Alibaba partnership has a component of that. It sounds like that. you're taking some lessons from some of these new startups that we've seen. Well, you know, we think innovation comes from everywhere. But one mm. thing I will say, when I look around the world, I think in China, we are seeing the most rapid innovation and the most forward-thinking uh, companies in the world. And that's why partnering with Alibaba Group and bringing our Starbucks China team together is so important. The way we've built our business in China has been built in China for China. So we have all the R&D teams here that design stores, they innovate around food and beverage, they do the digital flywheel. And that team is, has been very innovative. And now partnering with Alibaba, you know, in a lot of ways we see this as rocket fuel for our business here in China going forward. The revenues are up, of course, but the, the, the in-store sales are down about 2% in the last quarter in China. When does that start to turn around? We're in a phase of growth in China where it is all about new store builds. And uh, as we build 600 new stores a year and expand the portfolio, that's where we're growing transactions and growing our reach. Now, certainly in this last quarter, uh, we had a negative 2% in, in same-store comparables across uh, the base uh, of stores that were in that, uh, in that number. And really, I think this enabling of delivery and weaving this digital experience, this virtual Starbucks store into every Alibaba property, I think that really opens the aperture to reach 500 million active registered users of Alibaba and bring that Starbucks experience to them. So I have no, no doubt that this is an accelerator uh, for our business in China. And that starts to impact the bottom line in 2019? Well, it should, no doubt. I think we're going to, the delivery we actually in September next month, we will have uh, roughly 150 stores in Shanghai and Beijing up on delivery. We'll have 2,000 stores in 30 cities uh, running on delivery by the end of the calendar year. And that's just going to propagate us into 2019. So, you know, I think the next two quarters are sort of the build out. And then we, we certainly in calendar 19 should see, start to see the benefits of this uh, kick in. Given the geopolitical tensions between Beijing and Washington, are you concerned that Starbucks could become a boycott victim if these tensions continue to become exacerbated between the two sides? We feel like we have a very symbiotic relationship with our Chinese customers and the culture here in China. So we're going to just stay focused to what we do and do well, and we're going to play the long game, and we'll let all the geopolitical stuff play itself out.